Halloween is here. The Queensland election is upon us. The majority of Queenslanders will have already cast their vote before the October 31st election. As early voting opens today across the state, an estimated 70% of Queenslanders are set to cast their votes ahead of Election Day. Record number of Queenslanders turn up on first day of early voting. The Electoral Commission of Queensland says more than 100,000 Queenslanders, a record, have lodged their ballots at early voting centres on Monday. Apparently, due to virus safety fears, Queenslanders have crowded into early polling stations across the state. I was one of them. I certainly wasn't worried about catching anything, and nor was anybody else that I saw. I think Queenslanders are just eager to vote. I certainly saw lots of people talking politics with each other, talking about all the important issues. Unashamedly, I voted for the Queensland Greens. Of course, they promised to create jobs, but so does every other party, so that's not why I voted for them. They've promised free hospital parking, which I think is great and long overdue. Many a time I've had to park a long way away or pay for expensive parking when my wife was pregnant or whatever. But that's not the reason I voted for them either. The main reason is for their policy on fully funded health and education, not to mention that they refuse donations from corporations. Queensland schools are notoriously underfunded, with only 69.26% of their needs-based funding being provided by the Queensland Government. Despite successive Labor governments promising more school funding, it just never seems to happen. How many years of Labor government do Queenslanders need to finally realise that the Labor Party are just not going to provide 100% funding? Anyway, I'm a realist. I understand that the Greens aren't very popular, so to be fair to the other parties, and to make this a more balanced presentation, I'll include some of the other parties' election promises as well. Let's start with the incumbent Queensland Labor Party. Their website is very scant on details. I can't find any information on their election promises. There's plenty of buttons to click regarding Labor Online merch. Anastasia Palaszczuk, joining Queensland Labor, renewing your membership, how to vote, and of course, how to donate money. Labor, we fight for Queensland. Now give us some money. They do have a policy platform, a document that's over 100 pages long, dated August 2019, but there's no particular mention of any 2020 election promises. So of course I had to turn to the news to find out what they're offering. Queensland Labor promises new Gold Coast Hospital. Hmm, that's good for the Gold Coast, but what about the rest of Queensland? Labor promises $880 million for Queensland councils. Better, I suppose. Queensland Labor promises free pads, tampons, ahead of election. That's great for half the electorate, but what about the other half? What about education? Queensland Government announces $1 billion boost to education on fourth day of election campaign. Yeah, I've heard this before. As I said earlier, we've had many years of a Labor government, and still Queensland has some of the most underfunded state schools in the country. And parents, teachers and children pay the cost. So I don't have much faith in Queensland Labor fixing this up. The Liberal National Party. Let's get Queensland working again. I mean, that's pretty much the promise of every party. $300 rego rebate for Queenslanders. Yeah, I'd be happy with a $300 rebate, but it's very much a one-off policy. It's not like that $300 is going to fix up Queensland's schools and hospitals. Queensland, change the government in 11 days. They're confident I give them that much. Looking deeper, the LNP have quite a lot of policy information and election promises on their website. Rebuild Queensland's economy and create jobs. Reduce the cost of living. Get tough on crime. Build new and better roads. Cheaper public transport would be nice. Get hospitals working again. Get back to basics in school. Cheaper public transport for students. Protect Queensland's environment. Make transport cheaper. As you probably know by now, I'm not exactly the biggest LNP supporter, but at least they've got their policy information out in the open on their website, unlike the Labor website, which seems to be more about Labor merchandise and the cult of Anastasia Palaszczuk. 
Actually, a couple of weeks ago, I read some news. LNP to put Labor last in its Queensland election preferences, elevating the Greens. And they kept their word. This is the Nanango How to Vote card. I've gone ahead and added the party names. And lo and behold, Labor are preferenced last, with the Greens coming in fourth. The LNP are so desperate to get Labor out of office that they're willing to preference the legalised cannabis Queensland party ahead of Labor. It's quite amusing, I think. Pauline Hanson's One Nation Party have also got a candidate for pretty much every electorate. Stand with Pauline. Their website includes a lot of their federal policies, which I assume will be similar to their state policies. Things like baby formula shortages, bring back Australian values, citizen-initiated referenda. That actually sounds like a good idea. Climate change, family law and child support, farming and water. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of them. You can go ahead and check them out for yourself if you really want to. I remember early this year when Pauline Hanson was selecting her candidates, she said, Don't bother applying if you only want to wear a suit and swan around the corridors of Brisbane. Those people can bugger off. Parliament is full of those types already. She certainly doesn't mince her words. Obviously, as a right-wing populist party, One Nation certainly do not like the Greens, with Pauline Hanson saying, Queensland has an inept opposition leader who has already announced plans to give preferences to the Greens at this election. I'm not only shocked, but frightened of a future Labor-Greens coalition running the state. I can assure Queenslanders right now that the Greens will go last on One Nation How to Vote cards. There's a few other minor parties also running across the state. IMOP, the Informed Medical Options Party. Basically, they're against forced vaccinations and fluoridated water. Clive Palmer's United Australia Party. Make Australia great! Civil Liberties and Motorists Party, who are against road tolls and water fluoridation as well. They want to end animal cruelty and want to provide free tertiary education. Legalise Cannabis Queensland, a better quality of life for all Queenslanders. Animal Justice Party, kindness, equality, rationality, non-violence. North Queensland First, this party was created in late 2019 after its leader Jason Costigan was expelled from the Liberal National Party. Catter's Australian Party, fishing freely and boiling a billy without a permit. And the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party. Gun rights mixed in with a bit of conservation. I hope I haven't missed any of the parties. As I said, I've already voted Green, only because I have a young family and I want fully funded schools. But if you want to vote for IMOP, go right ahead. Because luckily, you live in a country where you're free to do so.